Since we bought our van with the intention of converting her into a comfy home on wheels, there is one project that we can't wait to have it done. I say get it done because we actually started this project a few weeks ago. The standard bulkhead that comes in the van takes a lot of space, and different from what a lot of people think, this is not a structure element of the van, and makes us feel like we are in a cargo van. So, in order to feel more like a home, the idea is to replace that with a beautifully well-finished wall, that we will still have the capacity to act as a safe barrier. The only problem is that in order to do it the way we want, we will need to solve a few building issues, and we are not really sure how to do that. I mean, we don't know yet. We really don't know what we're doing. But hopefully, by the end of the week, we will figure it out. So, let's get to work. Hi, I'm Roberta. And I'm Duca. And after bringing a sailboat that was neglected for over 22 years back to life, we moved aboard and for the next two years we explored the Brazilian coast and part of the Caribbean, where we got an offer that changed our lives once again. We sold our boat and we moved to France, where we are building our new 43-foot aluminum exploration sailboat. And while the boatyard is building the hull of our new sailboat, we are learning the craft by converting a camper van to get ready to build the interior and all the systems of the boat ourselves. So, don't forget to subscribe and to join us every Sunday for our new episode. Let's see if you can do this. When we built this wall, we already cut this side also. The reason why we didn't install, as we explained on the past video, is because we needed the shower tray to be in place Otherwise, it would be impossible to have the shower tray behind the wall, and that's how we have now. Now we need to trim the excess of this wood, and the way you're gonna do that is by measuring here on the side. We've been struggling to try to decide how to keep going on this project and the reason for that is because we have so many different planes, like shapes and we don't know if we apply the finishing now or if we apply the finishing once we glue all the parts together but I think it's gonna be way too hard. We, originally the idea was we assemble everything, we glue everything, we screw everything and then we apply the finishing but I don't think we can trim the finishing when everything is ready. Yeah, usually people think that we overcomplicate things and there is no reason for that. And 90% of the time, we know exactly how we're gonna do it and it's not overcomplicated. We're just trying to solve a problem. Today, we are also trying to solve a problem, many problems actually, but to be honest, we are not really sure how it's gonna go. We're trying our best. So today is the 10% of the time that we really don't know what we're doing. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> When you buy a cargo van, it's standard to have what they call a bulk head. That's basically a division wall between the driving space and the cargo space of the van. This bulk head will act as a barrier wall, and in case of an accident, it will make sure that the goods you're transporting won't fly forward and hit the driver and the passengers. Different from what a lot of people think, this is not a structural element of the van. A proof of that is that you can buy the same model of van with the intent of transporting people instead of things, and this model will come without a bulk head. In many van conversions, people opt for taking the bulk head out and creating one big space. To be honest, this option is really tempting, and we can totally understand the reasons a lot of people do that. But for us, for our specific needs, it doesn't make sense for two reasons. First, we are building a van that we can travel to cold places, and opening a bulk head brings a lot of insulation issues. And second, and the most important, we do need to keep the three people sitting configuration of the van. As I'm pregnant and really soon, we are gonna be a family of three. Surprise, surprise! This is the color of our shower cabin. I love it. That's like, feels like concrete, even though it's not concrete, it's laminated. It's gonna be, I don't know, it's gonna create like a feeling of a different ambient and it's gonna divide the head, the bathroom from the rest of the van. I think it's gonna be really cool. So now we're cutting these first two pieces that is this one and this one. And then we're gonna do that one that's the wall on the entry of the van that's a different color. The tricky part here now is the connection of this angle, we'll, we'll see. Let's, let's cut first and then we'll, fingers crossed, it's gonna work. <laughs> My 
my intention was to do one piece and one piece and we've had trim in the middle. Hobaro wanted to do one piece. I, I, I need to give that one to her because I think it's, it's wrong enough. I think it would be really easy to glue actually. And look, I was also afraid that the holes would show on the laminated, but it's impossible. Yeah, you won't see. <laughs> By the way, we start this video saying that we are gonna do the laminated first and then the glue up. We change our minds, as you can tell. Decide to risk and to build everything, to glue up, to epox everything, and then to do the finishings that we're gonna do now. And also we could screw, we screw them in place. Yep, and also we could finishing. screw, yeah, otherwise we could not screw in place. Yeah. Also, one quick explanation. The reason why you apply epox resin all the way around on the edges and not on the center is because the plastic laminator is watertight, it's water sealed, so this is not gonna get wet with the water in the shower cabin, but the edges we are gonna glue in place with Sikaflex, and Sikaflex is just gonna glue in place, it doesn't guarantee that we are gonna have a sealed wood. When you apply epox resin, it impregnates the wood, and the first layer of the wood is pretty much resin, so it's watertight, and that is, I think, a better solution. So we apply epox resin, and then when you glue, glue in place, it's gonna be with Sikaflex, to have the flexibility and to be properly tied in position. But now, stop stalling, let's just glue this thing because I'm just like, uh, <laughs> it's, it's scary when you don't do something for a long time. It's been a long, long time we don't apply plastic laminated, but we'll be fine. This is a little bit different, I guess, than the one I'm used to using in Brazil. This is called gel, so that's like a contact gel cement or something like that. But they say it's better for this application, so. Trust the store and let's see what happens. And also this, as it has a texture of concrete, I think it hides any little tiny mistake, mistake. but so far I don't see any bubble and that's yeah. really, really good. It's great. And this is the color of the wall. I'm pretty sure for you guys this is just white. <laughs> this is not really white. That's like a little bit like icy, brownish, but the camera is hard to pick this up. But trust me, it's beautiful, at least for my taste. It up. I mean, I messed it up. I just broke the laminated. I don't really know what we're gonna do. We need to do a finishing front. This has been a really hard project, but actually, it is. We'll get there. Actually, this glue is worse work than the, the one we used use. to use in Brazil. Yeah, yeah, this glue is just the gel glue. I, I didn't really like to be honest. I thought it would be a lot less, more liquid and we could apply with the roller. That was the intention since the beginning. We were gonna apply with the roller, but it's just not possible to apply with the roller. That didn't work well. Bad day. time for the other side. 
Well, by now you know already that we are gonna have a laminated wall on one side of the bulkhead and a fake letter on the other side. And the problem of that is that the laminated will seal the panel while the fabric will still allow the wood to exchange moisture with the environment. And in this case the laminated can bend because of the moisture difference between the two sides of it. To prevent this to happen, it's important to seal both sides of the plywood. And this is the reason why we applied epoxy resin in one of the sides of the panel. so good when you have something bad in one day, but you have something really good the next day. You know, we had a problem on the back side that we're still gonna fix, but this side, that's the driver's side. Check it out. So nice. Now the last step, I need to create a finishing for the edges. As you can tell, you can see the plywood in many places on the edges, mostly on the bottom one. I thought I was gonna do that by creating this little spaghetti with the same canvas so I glue one of the sides and create a spaghetti and then I can just you know glue to the edge like this it makes more sense on this sample so I did a few different iteration iteration yeah a few different options of finishing this one I just glue a canvas but you can tell that the glue is showing in some spots I remember today that we have some double side tapes that we brought from Sika Flex Factory when we went there. They have these double side tapes really, really strong. So I decided to give a try by using the double side tape to create a better roller. I'm gonna show you me doing and it's gonna make sense. And this is this finishing right here. That's my favorite one. Looks professional. That's the one I'm gonna go with. So now I have a lot of work. Let's do it. Perfect. Now I need to do this all over the, this stripe and then we just glue in place with double side tape and holds so well. For the first time, I'm really impressed. This double side tape is impressive. It's so strong. It's really hard to take out of your fingers. You get in there. I'm so happy. Check it out. At one point, I thought I could not manage to get a good finishing on the edges, and it ended up so good. Perfect. There you go. Of course, it's not a professional job. 100% no. It's the first time I attempt anything close to that. I'm so, so happy with the result. By the way, I'm not sure if I mentioned yet, but here I don't have finishings because once this is in place we're gonna have a trim around because it's gonna be much easier to do in place and it's gonna be much per more perfect because I'm not sure where the wall starts and where the wall finishes inside the car like it's not exactly in the end it might be like somewhere around here so it's gonna be easier in place and that's we're gonna do that in the future you good day good day so this stage is done we're gonna work on something that we're gonna do that later after it was installed in place but as we have time now we're gonna do today so we want to build a little box here because here is gonna be the place where you store things when you take a shower like shampoo soap and all these things that's why we don't have a finish in here yet that's next extra, extra step in the future not right now but I think it's good to have the little box at least ready and that's what we're gonna build now what do you say okay. And we also have a fixing to do. That's a, big, a bigger problem. We trim a little bit wrong this side. We need to take it's like... It's not wrong. We were not considering that we are going to have <laughs> finishing on the end. We put the finishing. That was a surprise. Oh. Yeah, we want to have a beautiful finishing on the edge. And here has no, it doesn't have enough space for the finishing. Here is fine. So from here up, we need to take like maybe one centimeter extra. And that's gonna be a little bit tricky because the finishing is ready, but we can, I think we can do that. <laughs> so let's get started with this one first. Is that perfect? I mean, that's really good. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> 
a lot more lucky than anything else. Because we had two different angles. Yeah, there is an angle here, and there is also an angle here, <laughs> and both of them are just literally perfect nail. That's pretty good. So now next step is to cut the top. I'm just impressed. I really, really like this jig. I don't know if you remember, we got a lot of gifts from Pije, a company from Spain. And now I needed to screw two pieces of wood like this, square. But of course, it's always tricky when you screw something because it slides and move out of position. And check this out. I have my mark right there crossing. And this is really steady in place. 100% square inside. That's just the easiest screw of my life I guess. I'm gonna screw everything in place and then I'm gonna take these screws out as we did with the rest and glue with epoxy just to guarantee. So as the more you twist this knob the more it compress and gets it together. Perfect. We like it. far too long but now I'm on my way back home I hear the west winds calling I'm my name they telling me to head your way down your road and past your gates keep your eyes on the horizon I was looking to belong when I'd already found For the setting sun For you to fall into my arms The place I call my home I was looking to belong When I already found of the day if the job is really big with resin just doing two stages it's just like it's been trying to dry on me for so long it's just like running against the clock but we did it this is looks really good the seal the seal I don't what's know the you, purpose of this yeah i don't know if you really understood this is the way i'm going to guarantee that there is no infiltration of water in on the walls of the shower cabin so the next wall is going to lean on this and this is epox glue to the this part so it will make sense in the future but this is epox to this part so that means this became one part there is no flexible seal that's like one piece the next wall is gonna lean right in front of it with Sikaflex so that means in order for the water to leak you need to go all the way around this edge and it's gonna make a lot lot harder to have some infiltration of water that's what I believe at least that's pretty good, I'm really, really excited. Th this is a really complicated project that is somehow coming together. I, that's, that's unbelievable. We didn't know what we were doing when we started. Mm -hmm. Now I have a really good idea, I think. I think. <laughs> Next step is the dangerous one. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think about anything that goes wrong because that's, you know, when you do a glue up or something like that is, when you start, you start, there is, it's a commitment. You, you cannot go back and that's the moment that you rather know what you need to prepare first because if you need to prepare something extra in the middle of the job you're in trouble. What's the idea? So the idea is you're gonna glue the bulkhead, that one right there, beautiful, in place with Sika 
and we're going to wait sicker? five to two. That's the mode purpose that we always use. I mean, by now you probably know we use that a lot, actually. <laughs> yeah, the reason why we use Sika is because if we just screw in place, when the van, when we drive the van, it moves and it, it cracks like. <laughs> If you have a rubber seal in between both pieces of wood, there is a less less probability that it's going to make noise. So the idea today is that I'm going to apply Sika first here on the bottom, on the piece on the top. We are going to put in place and I'm going to probably screw just like two screws and the rest I'm going to wait until it cures and there is like a rubber and then I can screw and squeeze and in this way I hope we don't have much noise. Of course some noise you always have is a van. A camper van makes noise, that's that's the reality, but the more we can avoid, the better. And the screws, by the way, it's already all in place. So it is going to be easier because I need to screw from behind and that's going to be really tricky. Oh, from here. Actually, not that tricky actually, it's easier than I thought. That's great. Yeah, good news. So let's stop stalling and let's do this. Also, I need to glue these trims of wood here. Just spacers. Let's, Let's get started. <laughs> it's like champagne. <laughs> I forgot that the last time I changed the setup of the machine, <laughs> there is like a few different speeds and I, I'm... Oh, I'm on max. <laughs> That's why. I changed last time. That's Good job. <laughs> So for the shower cabin we're gonna use black because I think it looks better on the gray finishing. And the problem is 100 percent this. I need the angle grinder. Take two. <laughs> Here we go. Wait, <laughs> don't celebrate too early. Remember I said it was easy. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> no, it's dark. It's a rainy day and we can't see anything. So the idea, as I mentioned before, I'm going to screw, but not all the way. I'm just going to screw to hold in place. And tomorrow when the seat is cured, then I'll give the last tide and then the rubber seal hopefully is going to help for the noise. Let's hope it works. Driving for the first time with the boat head in place and it's really, really, really silent. It's super great. That's one consideration that we forgot to mention. If you leave it open, it's probably going to make a lot more noise because right now it's completely silent and before we put the boat head, you could hear like the fan moving you, you could hear the noise from the panels and now it's just perfect. 